Time perhaps to change the way you feel about Vauxhall's Corsa. This fifth generation version aims to surprise in all the ways its predecessor was unremarkable. As a result, on paper at least, it's the most competitive Super Mini the brand has ever brought us. There's even an all-electric model. This PSA era Corsa starts off with a huge advantage over its predecessors, a much lighter CMP platform that's enabled it to lose a shed load of weight in comparison to its direct predecessor, 108 kilos to be precise. Uh, Vauxhall's engineers would have liked to have built on this by specifically tuning the drive dynamics of this car to British roads, as the brand has very really effectively done with previous generation Corsa models, but that wasn't possible this time around. Something evidenced for example by the way that the slightly overlight steering hasn't been tweaked for the twistier and more challenging tarmac common in our market as previously it might usually have been. Still, if you opt for a mid-range SRI variant like the one we're testing here today, uh, you will get a sport button to firm the helm responses up a bit. Uh, that's a mode that at the same time adds a sporty note to the exhaust. SRI models also get suspension equipped with special strut tower tie rods, which provide a form of cross bracing to create a more solid and precise feel through the steering. Engine-wise, we don't think your choice is going to be very difficult. Uh, you probably won't want a diesel, even though the 1.5-litre Turbo D unit offered here, uh, which puts out 102 PS, is impressively efficient. Ideally, too, you'd want to look beyond the base petrol power plant, a uh, 75 PS normally aspirated version of the PSA Group's usual three-cylinder 1.2-litre engine that, in this form, doesn't have a great deal of pulling power. That same 1.2-litre unit is much better suited to this car in the turbocharged 100 PS guys that we're trying here, a form uh, in which it manages to be very competitively clean and frugal. There's an NEDC rated emissions figure of 96 grams per kilometre and a WLTP rated combined cycle fuel consumption reading of 52.3 mpg. If you want to do substantially better and you can't face the thought of melting the polar ice caps in the diesel variant, then there is another more eco-friendly option available in the form of the battery-powered Corsa E. Now this makes a 100 kilowatt electric motor putting out 136 PS with a 50 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery that when fully charged is capable of giving the all electric Corsa a WLTP rated driving range of up to 209 miles. So, what do you think? This fifth generation Corsa F design is certainly very different from its predecessor. It's been described by Vauxhall as being less van-like, and if you come from the previous model, that'll certainly be your first impression, thanks to 39 millimeters of extra length and a substantial 48 millimeters reduction in roof height. It's certainly more grown-up looking thing with its smarter detailing, shorter overhangs and more vertical windscreen. And it now only comes with five doors. So nothing has been carried over in terms of styling or engineering and you'd expect the same to be true inside too. which is absolutely the case. If you've driven a Corsa before, as most of us have, the Griffin badge on the steering wheel will be the only thing you'll recognize about this one. You sit much lower than you did before and the cabin surrounding you is of considerably higher quality with glossy black trim that delivers a much more upmarket feel. Technology also helps, of course, with the greater perception of sophistication. Uh, the minimum center dash size for the monitor is now seven inches. That's like the one we've got here while at the very top of the range you can have a wide brightly colored 10 inch HD fascia display. Both monitors deliver the expected smartphone mirroring functionality and of course there is navigation too. Now that's optional with this smaller screen. Avoid entry level trim and you'll find another 7 inch digital display featuring with virtual dials in the instrument binnacle here. Now we've stuck with the conventional gauges instead here which are separated by a 3.5 inch trip computer. Build quality, uh, it doesn't quite match the highest class standards, but ergonomically, there's not much to fault. The seats are supportive, uh, nothing's irritatingly awkward to get to, and everything's exactly where you expect it to be. 
Vauxhall has produced a much better Corsa of that. There's no doubt it's smarter, quieter, classier and more sophisticated than any of its predecessors. But it's also considerably more expensive too. So it's just as well that you're getting plenty more in return. True, it's not class leading in any particular area, but it is a very mature feeling little thing with a combination of virtues that's difficult to beat. It's a small Vauxhall for which no apologies need to be made, and that will worry obvious super many rivals. After all, this model's predecessors had nothing like the depth of engineering and quality of this car, yet they still racked up very respectable sales. This time around, the Corsa aims to sell on more than just sheer value, and it might just manage it.